Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with The Practical Painters, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the 10 things I carry in my pockets while I paint, and why I think you should consider carrying some similar items on your person whilst you paint for yourself or somebody else. So let's get to it. Item number one is the first thing I carried consistently with me on the job site. I think I've had this knife for over 15 years now. Uh, this is a folding utility knife. Uh, it is made by Husky and you can pick these up at Home Depot. They don't have this exact knife anymore, but they do have one very similar to it, which I will link in the description. I really like this knife. It's very lightweight. It uses uh, your standard utility blade and these are uh, quite nice to have around because you can use them to scrape uh, paint off of things that shouldn't have paint on them like windows and floors and other things. It's just very nice to have um, uh, this type of blade on you. Also, I have a gang of these in my bag, so I'm always swapping these out when these get gunked up. And, and this little knife, this little mechanism right here that holds the blade in actually doubles as a can opener. I don't think that was intended when they made the knife, but I find it to be uh, rather effective at doing that. So I'm opening paint cans with this all the time. So there you go. Item number one, folding utility knife from Husky. All right, item number two is sandpaper. This is 150 grit sandpaper made by 3M. It comes in sheets that are twice as big as this and then I rip those in half and fold it into thirds and then it slips rather nicely in my back pocket. I'm always finding uh, things and imperfections in the walls and the trim that need to be sanded. You know, a lot of times you get leftover nap from the person that rolled it uh, previously that gets stuck in the wall and then you can sand that out. Also spackle spots, wood putty spots, all that, all that good jazz. So it's just good to have some sandpaper handy so you can sand that out and then you're just making things smoother and smoother, which is a big part of uh, a good quality paint job. Item number three is a blue paper towel. These are just blue shop towels. They come in rolls that look like this. Uh, we have these on the job site all the time. Usually I leave one hanging out of my left pocket. And uh, that way, if I'm getting paint on my fingertips uh, or uh, wiping down caulk or wood putty, it's just nice to have a little paper towel to wipe my fingertips off with and keep my hands clean. Uh, also, if you happen to spill something or get paint on something that you shouldn't have, uh, a lot of times just a little spit on this and then wipe down can get most things off. Uh, and then, like I said before, we have these on the job site, so when one gets too crusty and gross, you just throw it out and then put a new one in your pocket. So I find that to be extremely uh, versatile, and we use those all the time. So that's kind of like just those three items would be my top tier three items of most useful things. If you just have similar, th you know, if you have sandpaper, a paper towel, and a good utility knife on you, you will use that way more than you think, and it'll keep your workflow and everything going quite smoothly. So those are my, my top three picks. Now we're going to get into some things that are a little bit more uh, perhaps in the weeds or a little bit more nitty gritty. Item number four is a Sharpie, if I can get it out of my pocket. Yes, it is a fine tip Sharpie. We use these all the time to label things. A lot of times we grab a roll of uh, yellow frog tape and uh, we just write it out on here, rip off the piece of tape, and then we're labeling our edging containers, our roller pans, cans of paint. Uh, we try and stupid proof as much stuff as possible on the job site so that way we're not, we're not mixing up ceiling paint or trim paint, uh, which has happened before. So there you go, that is item number four, a Sharpie. And for whatever reason, my brother and I lose these constantly. I'm not quite certain where they go, but uh, generally we buy these uh, by the case, so we always have them lying around, but there you go. All right, so number five is a more recent addition. I've had this for about a month and a half, but it is the uh, S2R Baton 2 by Olight. This is a tactical flashlight, and this is my new favorite. Uh, I have been using this quite a bit, and it's a game changer. I really didn't think I would like it as much as I do because you know you have a smartphone on you usually so you're like oh, I'll just use that light but man when you have a good flashlight uh, it, it really makes a difference I often find myself clipping it to the brim of my hat and then uh, using it as a headlamp which I look like a little bit of a dork but it's just really nice to light up areas that are hard to light up a lot of times on a job site it's hard to you know light things in weird spots with wall lights or work lights but this kind of can get in all the weird spots that uh, it's just hard to see. It's got a bunch of different settings. It's got a low, medium, and high. It also has this cool candlelight feature, which is just very, very faint. 
uh, which I find to be highly useful when I have to sneak into my bedroom at night because my wife goes to bed before me and I'm actually a nice guy. It has a magnetized uh, charging uh, base, so it comes with this USB charger and it just clips right in there. Uh, and this goes into like any USB charger, like iPhone charger, whatever you have uh, that works. The charge lasts a really long time and I have enjoyed this quite a bit. It's got a nice weight to it and it feels pretty durable. So anyway, that is the S2R Baton 2 by Olight. Item number six you probably already own. It is just a smartphone. Uh, mine happens to be the new iPhone 11 Pro. Uh, yours doesn't have to be an iPhone. It can be whatever smartphone you prefer. Uh, but what we like using our smartphones for, aside from the, the normal stuff, is to take reference photography of rooms we are breaking down uh, to paint. And a lot of times uh, we've been taking a lot of video as well. So if you have pictures on the wall and furniture in specific spots that you like, uh, particularly if you're painting for somebody else, or you know, even if you're painting in your own house, a lot of times you'll forget where things went exactly. So if you just take a few seconds before you start breaking a room down uh, to take a quick video or a couple of pictures to just have some reference, when you reassemble that room, you will be very happy that you did so. There you go, that's the smartphone item number six. Uh, one of the things, too, that is I find to be very important is to keep yourself entertained while you are painting. And uh, painting can be a little bit tedious and boring, which is why a lot of people don't enjoy it. Which brings me to item number seven. And these are AirPods. And you can, again, have any headphones of your choosing. I just happen to really like these AirPods. Uh, they're, they're just really convenient. Uh, I like putting one in at a time. Uh, and that way I kind of maintain some spatial awareness and people can't sneak up on me on the job site. Also, I just find if you have two in, you kind of can lose uh, where you are in space, which isn't the best when you're, you know, working up high or on a ladder or anything like that. And we're always listening to uh, podcasts and audiobooks and stand-up comedy and things like that. Uh, usually we're running a work radio with a Spotify playlist, but uh, my brother and I both like listening to podcasts and audiobooks. So a set of headphones is really, really nice. And... Uh, my next two items are related to the AirPods, uh, which are, uh, I saw both of these things. So this is item number eight. Uh, this is a catalyst case that the AirPod case slips into. And it's really nice because it clips to my belt loop and I can open these little flaps uh, one handed and just pop one of the AirPods in and then close this quickly. It just keeps the dust out and I also like how it just sits on my belt loop so I always know where it is and I'm not digging way down deep in my pocket to find it. Um, and it also plugs the charge port so you're not getting a lot of dust in there. And then the number nine is a little bit more specific to, to my needs, but this is a ear buddy, which is a silicone ear hook that goes over uh, the AirPods. And for whatever reason, my uh, left ear does not hold the AirPod nearly as well as my right. so. I tend to use one of these little silicone ear hooks and that way it looks like that. So when you slip that in, it just is really, it sits in there really nice. It won't fall out because I may or may not have uh, negatively modified my first pair of AirPods by having one fall out into an edging container full of paint, which it turns out is not the best for electronics. So if you have a uh, a similar problem with AirPods falling out of your ears. I found them to be really useful. And this is the packaging you get. There you go, all right, yeah. So you get a little package of these for a few shekels on Amazon. I will link to that stuff. But uh, it gives you, I think, four hooks. So two for each AirPod. And they also are really nice to work out with. So there you go. All right, so now for our 10th and final item. I, uh, this is my newest addition. Uh, but it's growing on me quickly. This is the Leatherman Skeletool CX. And uh, yeah, I don't generally like multi-tools because they have a lot of things on them that I don't need or use, and they tend to be quite heavy, but this is only five ounces, which is pretty light. It's got a carabiner clip. It's got a bottle opener. It's also got, you know, your standard Leatherman uh, pliers, wire cutters, that kind of stuff. But the main reason I got it is for this exact feature, which is a... Uh, bit driver. This is interchangeable. So it's a screwdriver basically that is in your pocket and you have the bit uh, can be interchangeable. So you have a small and large uh, flathead as well as a small and large Phillips head. That bit is right in the handle. You slip that out and can slip the bit uh, right in here. So 
<clears throat> very handy to have a screwdriver in my pocket because we're always pulling off face plates and outlet covers and for whatever reason we tend to lose all of our screwdrivers. Uh, I don't know where they go but I assume uh, probably to the same place as all of those Sharpies. Yeah, it's just, I really have enjoyed that. It also has uh, this upgraded steel in the knife in the CX model. And uh, you might be saying, you know, Jeremy, that's kind of redundant. You already have a knife and I agree with you. However, as Logan Ninefinger says, you can never have too many knives. So there you go, folks. These are the 10 items that I carry on my person every day while I paint. I hope you all found that useful. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave us a comment down below. Um, I will also link to all of these items in the show description. Uh, so until next time, thank you guys very much for watching, and y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Well, I've seen the fruits of a labor, what I have I built with my own hands. A remarkable first attempt.